Hi everyone. Uh, so in this video, we're going to start looking at a different space. So we've been looking at like Euclidean vector spaces, real vector spaces, um, and we're going to kind of change things up a little bit. So in particular, like everything before, we've basically been looking at just vectors, right? We've been talking about vectors here, vectors there, vectors there, but like at no point did we talk about points in space. Um, in other words, like Normally when we're graphing things, right, there's points, right? We say, oh, here's a point, there's a point, there's a point, zero, zero is a point, blah, blah, blah. But you can also think of vec, like, so it's like, how do, how does the idea of points and the idea as a vector, how do they differ and how does that kind of put things together? Or how do they kind of merge together? And this is where affine space kind of comes in and in that you can kind of think of vectors starting from points um, and interacting in this way. So we're going to talk about affine space. So how does this work? Um, it's very exciting. Basically, we let En be an n-dimensional Euclidean vector space. So remember that this is somewhere where the, or we have an orthonormal basis. Um, we let the Euclidean affi affine space associated with En to be the set of points An along, so An is a set of points, along with an addition map that allows us to add points with vectors. So in other words, we have this map. We have this map here. Um, that is allowing us to take some point. So here we have a point. Point in AN. And we have some vector. V in EN. And we come up with some point. So, um, we haven't really said what this point looks like, but you can kind of intuitively think of this as you start off with some point P. I look at my vector V, right? Starting from that point. And the point here is the point exactly that I want. So this is intuitively what the idea that we're trying to do. Um, so there's three kind of conditions that we kind of want here. For every vector v and w, and for every point p, what we want is that it shouldn't matter if I add the two vectors and then I move the point p, or if I do one vector and then another vector. p plus v plus w. So kind of we shouldn't matter where these parentheses are, or these brackets are. Additionally, for every point, if I add the zero vector, in other words, I don't go anywhere, I should stay exactly where I'm at. And then finally, for every two pairs of points, there should be a unique vector that takes me from what, that point to another. So there should be some unique vector v where I can go from p to q. Um, so notice how, um, since they are different objects and they behave differently, we're going to try to always stick with p um, points being capital letters without a bar and then lowercase um, letters for uh, vectors with a little line when, we're right, when I'm writing it. So this might seem a little bit um, abstract, unintuitive, um, and it's like, it's very weird, but this is actually exactly how um, Rn, so like the real vector space or like how graphs or like what you've been learning in most of school, this is exactly how it kind of works. That we start off with a point, we move and we get another point, right? Um, now, so the main thing is, unlike vector spaces that have a very clear zero, right? There's a zero, zero vector. Affine spaces do not come with some fixed, like zero or some origin, right? So there's no zero or origin. Like notice how in the definition, I never said that there's some point that is zero, zero, right? There's no point zero. I never said this. Um, because if you think about this abstractly, what does having a point zero even mean, right? Like, since points, you can just go from one point to another, the indexing doesn't really matter, right? Like, I can say this one's zero, zero, I can say that one's zero, it doesn't, like, it doesn't really change anything. Um, but having a zero, as we kind of know, is a very useful thing. So since there's no zero, we need to find some way to kind of, like in some set, set a zero. 
um, we want to replicate this Rn. So this kind of leads us into the idea of what's called a coordinate system, right? So here, we're trying to find a way to describe the points An, right? So, so far, we've had no way to describe them. And this is one of the reasons why we have difficulty saying what is a zero. So a coordinate system is basically a system on the points where there's some kind of map from R to the N, so the real numbers, to A N, that it signs every real number, every N tuple of real number to a point in P. So every real number to some point in P. So in other words, we can consider, for example, one, so in R, if N equals two, let's look at, uh, do we have an example? Yeah, we have an example. Um, no, okay, we'll do this example in the next one. So like what we kind of have is like, for example, if n is equal to through three, um, and I have like the point one, three, two point seven, this is going to be associated to some point P in a three. I don't know what point, but it's some point. So because of this, we can kind of think of, so we can think of, we can think of P, we can think of P as one, three, two, seven. Even though it's not really, like this is just giving it some indexing, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so what we'll do is we'll look at a more, nat like basically what we do um, in normal life, um, we'll give a natural indexing called the Cartesian coordinates, and we'll look at that in the next video. Um, so we'll see a nicer example on that one. Um, so I will see you in the next video for that.